Hello, my friend and friends. I have a blue background that is stuck here and that's because all of my content is in my main. So I have one main, everything's in there and that main currently has a width on it. And this is already causing a problem, but we're gonna fix, I want my blue background to escape outside, right? So let's make that happen first and then we'll fix the other problems I have that are going on in here. Uh, so for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this main selector and I'm gonna change it into a class selector of wrapper. And now everything isn't being held anymore because I changed that. And I'm not gonna put that wrapper on the main. I'm gonna come here instead. I'm gonna do a div class is equal to wrapper like this. And what I would encourage you to do if ever you have these types of uh, things where you can't really see what you're creating, which, which is very common to happen. And in early days, when you, it can be hard to visualize what's actually happening. So let's come in here and add a border of five pixels. I'm gonna do dotted red so we can see exactly where it is. And I've opened it here. I haven't closed it anywhere, but it's still going to put it in the page for me. And it's just gonna, the browser's like, oh, it never ends. So we'll just end it at the bottom. Uh, and we have, we're back to where we were before, where we're stuck with the blue background there, right? So let's fix that, where I'm gonna have my wrapper start here. Then I have my H1 that's right there. Then we have this section of content, that's all fine. And then we get to this one here where I have a class with has the background color on it. So this section is where the background color is coming from. So what I actually wanna do is I wanna end this wrapper here, right? I don't want that blue background to be stuck inside of there. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna say close div, and we can even put a comment here to help remind ourselves this is closes wrapper. Because when you have these random closing divs, sometimes you have like four in a row, it can be hard to remember what they're actually doing. So we can close my wrapper, and then we can see that now this background color is expanded now we have a problem. My text is also expanded. We will fix that. But let's come after that blue background first. We can come over to where the rest of my regular content is here. And I'm gonna come and say that I have another div class is equal to wrapper. And I'll talk about why I'm using the name wrapper as well. Um, but then we can go down all the way down to the bottom here. <laughs> Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Even though the browser is gonna close it for me, I would say it's always a good idea to actually close div, uh, to close the wrappers you have. And once again, we can put a comment here because this is so far away from the opening one. We can say uh, closes wrapper, just like that. And then to also make it more obvious, I'm gonna put my cursor right here on that thing. I'm gonna scroll all the way back up. Let's go as fast as we can without being disorientating. Uh, and see, losing our spot. So here's where the wrapper is starting. So I'm gonna push shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna go to the section and I'm gonna push tab just to do my indentation so it makes it more visually obvious everything that's inside of the wrapper when I'm looking at the HTML as well. And now we have the wrapper at the top and we have this wrapper there. And this is why having a class is useful because we can reuse it. Whereas if I had that original thing where I was putting it on my main or sometimes you even have a width on your body, then you're just locked into this big thing holding all of your content and you can't have these elements that can escape outside of it. There's ways of doing it that are kind of hacky, but if we don't need to bother, you know, if we can avoid hacks, we should avoid hacks. Uh, but of course, now we need to fix this area right here as well. And to do that, I'm gonna come here where we have this background color. Let's add a bit of extra space there so we can focus just on that. And now this has the background color on it. So I want to allow that to stay full width. I just don't want the content inside of it to go full width. Well, that just means I can come right here and I can do my div class is equal to wrapper right there. Of course, the closing triangle bracket goes there. Then I have my H2, I have my paragraph, and then I would come down here and I can close div. And once again, let's put a comment there, close wrapper just like that. And then we can come select all of this, hit tab to fix our indentation all along there. And now we can see I have a wrapper here that's closing. I have this other wrapper inside of the blue background. And then I have this other one that's going on over here. Now let's go and turn off this red thing because there is a problem still, but let's make it look like what it would look like now that we understand how it's working. Uh, and so I'm pretty happy with that. But the problem is if I go to smaller sizes, this is not working and even when I scroll over, like the background doesn't extend out, but my text does and I can't read it unless I scroll, it, it's, it's terrible. Uh, and we have a bit of a problem going on right now. So to be able to fix this problem, what's causing this is the width that's here. And before I look at what the fix is for that, I just wanna let you know that I have a completely free course that if you're very new to HTML and CSS and so far you've been enjoying this lesson, uh, the free course is here on YouTube as well as on my course platform. I'll talk more about that in a second, but we look at building out this page here. We're covering things like Flexbox and Grid, which are our layout tools, 
We're talking about making things responsive so the font sizes can adjust and the page can adjust as the screen is getting smaller or larger. We build out multiple pages. We talk about images, changing colors, all the things you need to know, links, everything like that, that you need to know when you're first getting started with HTML and CSS. So the name of the course is HTML and CSS for absolute beginners. And if you, here it is on my course platform that has the advantage of, first of all, it's ad free versus YouTube, but where you can also keep track more of the lessons you've been going through. And at the same time, there's a text less that goes along with the lessons as well with the video content that is still here in the platform. And then there's the code snippets that you can look at. And there's those interactive examples that are here too. So here, if I do a paragraph, I could say this has a color of red and I can see it change live here in the browser. And it goes from the absolute basics, assuming you've never touched HTML and CSS before to building out that website we were just looking at. So if you're interested in that, both the playlist here on YouTube and the link to this version of the course are both down in the description just below. And with that, let's look at fixing this uh, the, the issue we had here with our overflows. So to be able to do that, what we wanna do is just here I have a width. Instead of saying a width, we're, let's delete all of this actually. <laughs> we're gonna modernize this a little bit instead of a width uh, we're, we could do a max width but I'm actually going to say not even to do a max width but to do a max inline size instead and I'm going to do 720 pixels and then instead of the margin left and the margin right what I would recommend is a margin inline and I'm going to do auto here and it looks the same as before and I'm going to explain what these are in just a second but you can see it's working exactly how we had it but now at the smaller sizes it's allowing the content to squish down and get narrower and it doesn't cause that overflow in the horizontal scrolling that we had before. So to explain this a little bit that I was mentioning, what this is, is the inline size is the logical property for our inline axis. Same here, our in margin inline is the margin on the inline axis. And in most languages, our inline axis is the left to right. So we're talking about the left and the right side. And the reason it's a logical property is if ever you had something that was a vertical writing mode that you get in some Asian languages, for example, then the inline axis would actually switch because the writing is vertical, so the inline axis is the other way. Uh, but it has the advantage, especially with these shorthands like this, um, where margin inline won't touch the top and the bottom, so it's a shorthand for only the left and the right. And if ever you did need to target only the top and the bottom, we have our margin block like this. And if you'd like to know more about logical properties, I'll put a link in the description down below on a video that just talks about logical properties and how they work and what they're good for uh, and why we wanna be using them basically for everything we do. And the other thing I'm gonna add here is a padding inline as well. Uh, I usually do one rem just out of habit, but if you're not using rems here and you'd rather use pixels, if you're using pixels for font sizes, don't do that. It's covered in the course why you don't wanna do that. Uh, but let's come here and say like 21 pixels for my padding on the inline. And what that just does is when we get to these smaller sizes, we're stopping the text from touching the side. Like if I remove this, you'll see that the text touching the edge, if you're ever on your phone and you've seen websites that do that, I guarantee you, you hated it. So uh, you can see just by having that padding inline, it prevents the content from touching the edges. And this one down here, uh, the gap there is just caused because of the scroll bar area. That's why we have that. Um, but if we make this bigger here, you can see that everything's working great and that padding is just helping us with a little bit of extra spacing on the sides right there. One last thing I wanna mention is you might also see this called a container rather than a wrapper. And it's very common naming convention to call these containers. It's more widely used than wrapper. I used to call them containers. So if you watch some of my older content, you will also see me do that. So I wanted to bring it up just cause it's something you will see in the wild. The reason I'm using wrapper is first of all, it is another name that is commonly used for this type of thing. But in CSS now we have something called container queries and I find it could be confusing if I have a class of container that has nothing to do with a container that's being created for a container query. So I've stopped calling them containers. I'm now calling them wrappers instead. So dot wrapper is what I would suggest, but if you want to go with a dot container instead, again, that would be something that is very commonly used. As a reminder, if you did enjoy this lesson and you want to go through the course, the link to both the playlist version here on YouTube or the full course version of it, they're both linked down in the description below. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more. Awesome.